We'll have hundreds of people feeding off of this program and the poor little kittens will be forgotten about at the end. The kittens, Mr. Aww. Speaker. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. You know, if there's one thing that you can count on the Liberals to do, it's not take accountability for any of the problems that they cause. You can also count on them to avoid fixing the problem and then spend a fortune in taxpayer money to try and insert themselves as the guardian angels of all of us so that they can then implement legislation that will only exacerbate the problem. I am, of course, talking about the newly proposed National School Lunch Program set out in Bill C-322. To begin, let's take a look at a story that CBC ran almost a year ago. Taking 50 feet out today. Yeah, I saw it. Wonderful. It's mid-morning at Edmonton's Norwood Elementary School, and these volunteers with a local charity are busier than ever, making nutritious lunches and snacks for students who need them. A noble task, but one that's getting harder and harder to fund. We all know when we go to the grocery store, sometimes the nutritious food is usually the most expensive food. So at the same time, we're seeing an increase in need. We're actually seeing an increase in the cost to run our program. And so we're feeling the pinch as well. Across Canada, food programs in those schools lucky enough to have them are provided by a number of different organizations. They rely on funding from a patchwork of sources, including provincial and municipal governments and private donations. But they're all feeling the same squeeze, increased prices, increased demand. According to Breakfast Club of Canada, one of the biggest facilitators of school food programs, in the pre-pandemic days, on average, 30 to 40 percent of students would sign up for a free meal. Now, in some schools, that number is between 60 and 70 percent, an increase seen in that Edmonton school. So last year we had just over um, 180 um, students accessing um, our school nutrition program and this year we're well over 220, closer to 225. The need and costs are so much higher, some food programs have had to scale back, but help could be on the horizon. Over a year ago, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tasked his ministers with developing a national school food program. Well, we're still gathering all of this information and I can tell you that we'll be, you know, submitting that to my colleagues uh, in Ottawa as well. Uh, but there's a lot of interest right across the country. Um, Canada is one of the few OECD countries that doesn't have a national school food policy. It's not clear if or when a national program will be implemented, but this expert says others need to step up in the meantime. As the food prices go up, core funding to school food programs needs to be increased from provinces and territories. To help ensure an empty belly never holds Canadian students back. So that was almost a year ago. And they're already talking about cost of food, yet nothing was done. A year ago, Trudeau wasn't diving in the polls like he was over the summer to actually force him to do anything. So this is something that I wish a lot of the Liberal supporters would take notice of is that it was being called out by CBC a year ago that food prices were having a very detrimental impact on kids and the liberals literally didn't lift a finger to do anything. But it was only after they took an absolute schlacking in the polls that Trudeau ordered people to do things in Jagmeet got all angry and said, we need the CEOs in here and all of this crap. And still nothing has happened except for the fact that Champagne invented flyers just time to time for Thanksgiving. Anyhow, the interesting thing about a report out of UNICEF. So this is from that report. Canada was ranked 25th in terms of providing access to nutritional food to, to kids. Norway was ranked first. So naturally, this got Fox and I a little curious. Well, if Norway is first and Canada allegedly sucks, what is so good about Norway? What are they doing? If 
if we were to kind of take a narrative away from the CBC video, one would expect that, well, naturally, we would expect that Norway has this Shangri-La of a school food program providing healthy vegetables and fish and all of this kind of nutritious food to kids on a daily basis. What we found was a study that was actually done in, uh, in Norway. And uh, it was done by four different health and nutrition professionals. Since they're Norwegian, I'm not going to try to butcher their names for you. But their first names are Christine, Nina, uh, Barit, and Freudis. I believe. The abstract says evidence suggests that a free school meal can improve children and adolescent diet, social environment, concentration, and school performance. This study aimed to investigate possible effects of a free healthy school meal among students that usually eat packed meals on behavioral issues, inactiveness, self-efficacy, school enjoyment, and classroom environment. So what does that mean everybody? Well, what they are doing here is they're saying that other organizations, other countries are essentially saying that there's there's evidence to support the fact that if you have a school food program that provides nutritious food, that can increase the performance of the student's academic abilities, potential physical abilities in their phys ed classes, improve their behavior, make them listen to their teacher, and improve their interactions between each other. So, okay, fine. That's the, the premise of, of which they're starting out this study. Now, you may be wondering, well, wait a minute. What do you mean they're, they're, they're doing a study based on the premise of a school lunch program? Well, we get into that in our second piece of evidence from that study here. So this is very important. Fox, would you uh, please read the first couple sentences there? Absolutely. There are no universal free school meals in Norway, and less than 10% of schools from 1st to 10th grade have local arrangements for parent-paid school meals, breakfast and lunch. Most students in Norway, 96%, attend public schools, and that's from Statistics Norway in the year 2020. Excellent. So... Ladies and gentlemen, what the CBC is trying to spin, and it's amazing to see this happen in real time, but they're trying to spin the Canada so far behind because we don't have a school lunch program. Neither does Norway. Neither does Norway. Norway is first, first on that report. And they have zero, zero lunch program anywhere. Yet they have the highest rated nutritional food provided to their kids and students in the world among quote-unquote rich countries maybe it's because we don't classify as rich country anymore i don't oh, know yeah seriously <laughs> but um anyway so they they ran this program for about a year in in norway what did they find you may ask well Let's take a look. So in conclusion, serving of healthy free school meals at lunchtime did not reduce behavioral issues or inactiveness in class. It did not increase school enjoyment or self-efficacy, and it didn't improve classroom environment in this study. While they do say methodological issues might explain the lack of findings in our study, and we encourage further research to enhance the understanding of universal free healthy school meals among different age groups with a larger study and with study designs involving perspectives of school children, family, staff, and policymakers. So that, that might be all fair, but I'm also looking at the fact that UNICEF has rated Norway as number one. So Yeah, and they're saying we didn't find any difference in this study. And what that says to me is that because kids are already sent to school with packed lunches that are nutritional, that of course a school lunch program is not going to make a lick of a difference. Now, the liberals are arguing that children are being sent to school hungry, that they don't have nutritious lunches, that they don't have anything to eat. And they're saying that's due to the cost of food. But they're the ones increasing the cost of food with the carbon tax. 
right, why has the cost of food gone up so much? And it's because of Trudeau and his liberal government, just like everything else has gone up so much. Yes, global inflation has a piece of that, but the inflation in Canada that has been skyrocketed because of the ridiculous spending that the Liberals have done in COVID and continue to do on a yearly basis, refuse to balance the budget and choose to continue to tax the ever loving crap out of us. That is the root cause of this. Absolutely it is. And, and some people just do not seem to understand that, unfortunately. It is absolutely tragic that children are being sent to school without nutritious food to eat. I don't think anybody is going to argue that point. However, the solution is not to inject big government into it and take away even more tax money from everybody, including from the parents of these children who cannot afford to give their children healthy, nutritious meals, and then, you know, shove it through all this bureaucracy and then the kid ends up getting some food. How about you just don't tax the parents to begin with? Well, let's see what Pierre had to say about this quote-unquote program because it was included in the fall economic statement that Freeland um, actually submitted. So let's take a look at his narrative around this. Mr. Speaker, today I rise to speak about false liberal advertising. What we have in the private sector are laws that could lead to the criminal prosecution of any business that advertises one thing and delivers the opposite. If somebody goes on television and tries to sell a product and then fails to deliver it after collecting payment, they can be sued civilly and maybe even charged criminally. But weirdly, in politics, we call it lawmaking. We have a Prime Minister who literally brings programs before the House of Commons that do exactly the opposite of what they say. So for example, he says that he's going to spend these millions of dollars buying back hunting rifles. What has this resulted in? A 100% increase in violent crime. He has a program that he says will help protect the media that has actually removed the media from social media, from social networks. He is a prime minister, we have a prime minister who has an $87 billion affordable housing program that has doubled the cost of housing. This is the exact opposite of what he promised, and yet he took billions of dollars from Canadians in order to pay for it. He has, for example, he was, they were busy uh, trumpeting their idea of a affordable food program for kids, and then we found out that there's no food in the program. Exactly. Exactly. They, we found out what the program does. It doesn't provide a single dollar right. for food. Here's what it does, and I've got it right from the bill. The minister must, in consultation, with the Minister of Health, representatives of provincial, representatives of the provincial governments responsible for health and education, other relevant stakeholders in the fields, and representatives of Indigenous governing bodies, develop a national framework to establish wow. a, food, a school food program. So let's just walk through all the steps. Because <laughs> we know that normally in the real world, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, but there were many points that were unrelated to kids actually having food in their bellies. One, that one minister would consult with another federal minister who will consult with provincial ministers, who will consult with stakeholders, which is code for lobbyists, who will then develop a national framework to establish a school food program. So. I note that the bill actually didn't provide a single dollar That's right. to source anything of nutritional value. Exactly. Not a single calorie exactly. of nutrition is funded by the bill. Yeah, right so it doesn't feed kids, it feeds bureaucracy. That's right. This is an example of all of the wonderful labels and slogans they put on their spending that actually doesn't deliver anything to the end user. That's right. It is more self-service, not public service, self-service yep. of the bigger and fatter bureaucracy and the ecosystem of lobbyists, interest groups, 
um, researchers, bureaucrats, uh, crown CEOs, contractors who feast off of all the money that is hidden under these beautiful and unimpeachable slogans. You know, the beautiful Let's Protect Innocent Kittens Act. Well, we'll spend a billion dollars on that, but we'll hire a bureaucrat who will create a department that will consult with yep. paid interest groups who will contract out their report writing to those who have expertise in PowerPoints. And we'll have hundreds of people feeding off of this program and the poor little kittens will be forgotten about at the end. The kittens, Mr. Aww. Speaker. What about the kittens, Fox? Indeed. <laughs> So that's uh, that was Pierre's take on this, and uh, you know we let that play out because because we like kittens. Well, and we like hearing P uh, Pierre speak as well. He's he's pretty witty when he's uh, thinking on his feet. Um, so that was Pierre's take. Now let's get to the actual bill itself, shall we? So this is the bill, Bill C three twenty two, an act to develop a national framework to establish a school food program. Okay, fine. So the summary says this enactment provides for the development of a national framework to establish a school food program to ensure that all children in Canada have access to healthy food. This implies that they won't have access to healthy food if this program is not in place. So Here's a couple of things that I wanted to point out as I was looking through this bill. Um, so as Pierre read, the minister must in consultation with the Minister of Health, representatives of the provincial governments responsible for health and education, other relevant stakeholders in those fields, and representatives of Indigenous governing bodies, develop a national framework to establish a school food program to ensure that all children in Canada have access to healthy food. So that was kind of a mouthful, but basically it's just a bunch of bureaucracy, as he was saying. Now, this is where it gets funny, sad, but funny. One of the first things that this bill does is <laughs> 2A, set out the criteria for determining what healthy food is. So... This essentially allows the government to say, well, we get to decide if our bill is actually a success. Because if we say food's healthy, then the bill is delivering healthy food. We could say pizza is healthy. Well, and that's just it. I don't want the government deciding what to feed my child. Right. And that's the whole problem, right? So, it, you know, the government could decide, well, you must... Feed, feed them these things. And some people say, no, 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 that, that, that's not what this says. Yes, this is exactly what it says. Look at 2B. Indicate which meals and snacks at a minimum must be offered in schools under the program. The government gets to decide what the schools put in there. Not the parents, not the teachers, not the nutritionists, not the nurses, the government. Well, and the problem is the government may consult some of those people. They may not, but they may. But the people who are really going to be having a say in this are the lobbyists. Oh, for sure. If you look at the old food pyramid, grains were like the biggest food group at the bottom. And now we're being told, you know, don't eat too many carbs. And that's because the grain lobby was very large and insisted on being the largest chunk in the pyramid. So here's some other things. C. Take into account the different circumstances in which children live, including cultural diversity and the resulting dietary requirements. How nice. Take into account the rights and priorities of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. E. Provide for measures to avoid stigmatizing pupils who use the program. Well, like they're going to force all of them, it sounds like, to use the program. Well, yeah. Because they want it universal. Absolutely. Absolutely. F, provide for measures to foster the use of local and sustainable food systems. Okay. Well, That's fair, but what happens in the wintertime? Well, also, you're, you're going to need to do a bunch of work to make sure that F jives with A, which is we determine what's healthy. 
and H, promote evidence-based healthy food education in schools across Canada. Yeah, well, I'm sure that, you know, notice that that comes after at the end of everything else. Yeah, that seems like the most important point to me that you should be teaching children how to cook, what, what, foods are you know high in fiber what foods are high in calcium high in iron etc um that should be number one on this list i don't know why it's at the bottom well and it it's really telling the sequence that this is laid out so first the government is going to decide what food is healthy then they're going to decide of those foods that they decide is healthy these are the foods that the schools must serve and then they're going to review the dietary requirements. And then they're going to promote an education program based off the foods that they've decided is already healthy, that they're already serving, and say this is the this is the the nutrition and you know that you need to be that you need to be consuming. But this is the thing, they're not building a school lunch program. They're building a framework for a school lunch program. Right. They're, they're, so what they're going to do is they're basically going to say, this is what you have to do. By the way, we're not going to pay for it. Or maybe we will. It wouldn't surprise me. Well, and that's the thing. Who knows who's paying for the actual lunch program? Is it is it going to be the federal government? Are they going to download the costs onto the provinces and territories? This is the issue because education is a provincial bucket. There's virtually no funds that go from the federal government to the provinces for education. It's a segregation, right? So, you know, for just to completely, you know, add clarity to this to everybody, a provincial, the provincial government is not above or below the federal government. They're, they're at effectively the same level. Like one does not have power over the other. They just have power over different things. It's, it's the, you know, decentralization of, of power in, in the country. So like Trudeau couldn't order Ford to do something if it was outside of uh, of of his of his mandate. Yeah, for example, he can't order Ford to fire all the teachers because that's provincial jurisdiction. Yeah, there, it has nothing to do with the federal government. So to to me, this almost seems like overreach on on on, on part of the federal bill, which says indicate which meals and snacks at at a minimum must be offered in schools. How can you do that? Because this is this is within the provincial the provincial sector. And here's the other thing. Guess what this does, everybody? It increases your taxes. Of course it does, because how many of these schools have cafeterias? I don't know about you, Cypher, but the the high school I went to had a cafeteria for sure. But the grade school I went to absolutely did not. And I don't know any in the area that did. I I don't really know a lot of grade schools that have a cafeteria. So you're going to have to build a facility or at least renovate something like a, a, a room or something so that you can have a, a food preparation room that is up to public health standards. And remember, let's just circle this right back around to what we talked about. This is trying to use money to fix a problem that doesn't exist that well that the liberals created the problem is that the cost of food is too high and so children are going without food because their families cannot afford food for them so instead of you know looking at the root cause of the problem which a big chunk of it is the carbon tax instead of saying you know what maybe we should take off that carbon tax the government saying you know what no we're gonna implement a national food program for school-aged children and we're going to have to obviously raise taxes again to support that. Well, and when I said that we're trying to fix a problem that doesn't exist, the, the problem that they're trying to create is that, well, the problem is that we don't have a national food program. That's that's how they're trying to define the, prob the problem. But if the cost of living in this country was not so outrageous, we would not need one. Right. Case in point, Norway. Norway is number one on UNICEF's list of having access to healthy and nutritional food within schools. And the vast majority of those kids are bringing a bagged lunch because Norway does not provide free meals. So we do not have a school lunch program problem. 
we have a Trudeau is still in office problem. 